using his crossbow. His trademark as well. The crossbow was first. You know, this is my thing. Why the fuck did he trust those guys to begin with? I mean, it's not being tea. Uh, I am, of course, uh, so thrilled to be bringing this latest installment of our Walking Dead Season 6 sub-series. This is, of course, Al Varn, uh, the AV, and I am, of course, uh, TJ Green, uh, so the AV and T. Quick uh, catch-up, I have recently purchased my Xbox One. I am now among the world of the Xbox living once again. <laughs> yes! Uh, we mentioned a f uh, couple of episodes back that we were planning on doing more content, and now we have the ability to do that for you. So uh, please keep an eye on the AVT Facebook, our own personal Facebooks if you have us, um, and the uh, AVT channel uh, for more information on that. We might as well uh -huh. just come out with uh, the big one, at least right for the, the most recent episode. Yep. Daryl. He's a. Uh... Wait, Daryl? Daryl. Losing, yeah. losing his bike, losing his crossbow. His yeah. trademarks. Well, the crossbow was first. I know. The, cr the crossbow was his trademark before he got the bike. Mm -hmm. But he was looking badass on the bike. So you can't have a badass warrior without a badass bike and mm -hmm. a badass crossbow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad he got away from his captors. I am rather sad at the, you know, at the loss of his trusty friends. Um, you know, crossbow and bikey, but, uh, you know, it, at least there's no worry right now before the mid-season finale coming up this Sunday, uh, as we tape this episode, where Daryl's going to die at least, I mean, you know, keep in mind there's been rumors swirling all over the internet, will Daryl Dixon die on this season of The Walking Dead? Currently, that is not the case. Daryl lost his crossbow, the bike. You could tell he didn't want to give the crossbow up. But, um, you know, this is my thing. Why the fuck did he trust those guys to begin with? I mean, it sounded good. Yeah. He did go with the, he did go with Rick's, uh, cross-examination questions. Well, they decided to cover their own hides, get the bike, and get the crossbow, and leave him in the dust. Oh, high and dry. That sucked. You know, I thought I thought that something good was gonna come from this. I really did. It, Daryl improvised really quickly. Yes, he did. He found that tanker that they uh, that they uh, used to uh, burn the walkers in the uh, forest. Yes. However, that went down. Um, they, they they come across a new th uh, some sort of a new threat, a new group of some kind of people. Um, I'm, I'm not. No, I'm pretty sure no one's familiar with them yet. Exactly. Yeah. Other yeah. than. That they're not the wolves. They're actually no. just a group of people that decided to um, build a, get together and build a settlement and then literally turn it into a Nazi encampment, as far as I can tell. Ah, uh, Gestapo Germany zombie apocalypse style. I definitely think this is a good uh, illustration of the dire straits that, you know, not only our crew, but the Alexandrians that are surviving, you know, the latest attacks um, are in. You know, clearly they're so desperate that they're going to do any tactic whatsoever. Not necessarily, you know, a wise one all the time, but there's an unpredictability to this whole thing. There's nothing that you can really predict in a zombie apocalypse. I mean, you know, clearly, you know, everybody is on the table, you know, for casualties. Um, you know, so... We, we know that much. They've proven this with, you know, the loss of the, you know, whole, you know, every season up to. Um, so they're trying whatever they can to do something to get the mega herd or the, you know, the super herd um, away from them so they can either run for the hills or at least, you know, still, you know, kind of, with you know, fortify the fortress, so to speak. Everybody at this point is, they know something's going to happen. They, they have that feeling. Mm -hmm. and they're just going for bore, trying to be proactive instead of being defensive all the time, which I don't blame them for. I mean, By the way, who else thinks it's badass in that, in that uh, episode 6, Abraham found an RPG? Just saying. Anybody with an RPG is going to be a badass. Oh, Abraham God. finding the RPG? 
super badass. Yeah. Well, when you see your Rambo-type dude, or in this case, a Rambo-type, like, Irishman, I guess you could say, I mean... With an RPG. Yeah. With an RPG. An Irishman with an RPG. Ah. Mm -hmm. The world is saved by all. Um, in this case, you know, Abraham has been a really complex character when at first he seemed, you know, kind of just quasi-layered. Um, you know, clearly his mission in life has been taken away. It was a lie. And you are in a situation where you want it to end. And there's, you, you know, you've, at that point you thought you were losing hope. And they, they were. They were losing hope. Mm -hmm. um, and Eugene comes along, who appears to have smarts, you know, and, and kind of in a way does, but he's, he wasn't proactive, again, there's the word, enough to use them. Mm. So Abraham was looking for something to hold on to, something to keep him going through it. You know, he at that point was fairly ready to die. He, he had nothing to want to survive the apocalypse for. So when Eugene gave him, and for a, a little while, everybody that mission of, okay, we're going in a completely opposite direction, let's go to Washington, let's, you know, kind of find this quote-unquote cure. So he, you know, Abraham had that. He had his, he, he's like a, he is a military man. You know, it's, you know, have, if he has a mission, he has a goal, he can use his reflexes, his brain, to go towards the goal, now that has been taken from him. And he's, you know, he's kind of finding his identity within the, uh, you know, this zombie world again. Hint at a love affair between him and Sash. Yeah. I wonder how Rosita's gonna find that. Rosita's probably going to want blood. She's probably gonna chop his dick off, just saying. Lorena Bobby, it is definitely potential for that. Almost, and Rosita has become although, a badass. Although I have a, I have a slight feeling babe, that since him and uh, since uh, Abraham and Rosita r r arrived at Alex Alexandria, I feel like that they've somewhat drifted a little bit. Little. I've noticed that. I wasn't sure. Well, but I've kind of noticed it. Abraham's regressed. He he's downgraded, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Whereas Rosita has become a badass. She's become the female version of what Abraham used to be and is now climbing, you know, climbing his way back into being. So the shoe in that sense is on the other foot. Mm -hmm. And Rosita, for the moment, was a reminder of what Abraham at one point used to be. Mm -hmm. And now with Abraham having this thing for Sasha, and, you know, the, that whole, uh, um, I, I agree with you, ending well, I foresee it not, um, all of the core group, you know, uh, Morgan, and Carl, and, you know, Rick, and Michonne, and everybody, you know, and, and I believe they kind of touched up upon that in a sense, you know, uh, in, in something that Rick was telling to, to Morgan. It's like, you know, can you really think, do you really think that you can go through this without claiming a human life? Mm -hmm. um, and... Well, that was on that. That was in the last one. Probably. Right, yeah. but it kind of holds some relevance to... does, actually. The, mm -hmm. the precursor that, you know, that happens in 6. Because it, it, it's along that line. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the unpredictability, you know, pairing, you know, you know, Rick with his girl and, and, you know, you know, unfortunately with, you know, Daryl losing Beth, but Beth was kind of like a sister to him and then he kind of, you know, I think he kind of had more feelings than a sister mm -hmm. brother thing, which I would have liked to have, kept, you know, seen kept going, but for my whole opinion on that, you can watch an earlier A, a B, and T, because mm -hmm. I covered that. Um, but it's got that, that zing to it, so it's going to be, mm. e even after, you know, we discuss uh, the, the most recent episode, which uh, is going to be, you know, pretty interesting, it's going to be interesting to see after the mid-season finale, the, 
the further consequences of what's going on, you know, with the new pairings and, you know, the kind of the, the new developments. Now that we make our way in uh, from that into yes. 7, well, um, I can tell you this. I saw it coming. I just didn't know when it was going to happen. I didn't know. I, I knew it wasn't going to be the walkers. And I knew for sure it wasn't the wolves. Because to summarize it, um, this is a, this is an episode where many things were going on at once, if you ask me. Oh, this took a look at um, many different things going on between Rick having concerns of Morgan, like he was saying something about if Morgan can actually kill when the time comes. Ending, I kind of find, kind of find a little fucked up. A little fucked up? Because this is the thing, right? And I'm, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, but we'll get back to it oh, in yeah. a sec. But the signal balloons. The signal balloons signaled that Glenn was alive. Maggie knew it. She ran and told Rick, etc. At that very moment in time. Oh, and by the way, Carl almost gets shot. That you could just think that thank the walls coming down that Carl didn't die. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, I think a lot of people can. But let's just put it this way: as soon as all this is all this is unfolding, the one fucking building, the one fucking building <laughs> that the truck crashed into, was, ended up cracking it down the center or the the, the, the you know the center of the building because it was like a chapel, or whatever, and it was like a tower that fell on the wall. Um, yeah. Um, that that they, is the total insult. They dangerous. left you hang in there with uh, with like fuck. I would love to add my own colorful expletives, but to be perfectly honest, he said everything I said. Pretty much. Um, I was like, you know, and and keep in mind, I'm I'm reiterating the disclaimer here. This is the A, B, and T. So anybody who's expecting to see the uh, ETA aspect of me and the whole, you know, not you know, decent, respectable language. This is your spoiler warning. Turn away now because I'm about to use some not quite so nice language. Mm -hmm. You have been warned. For those of you who are staying, I was like, fuckers got them off a peak moment. A peak! You know, number one, Maggie being pregnant finally finds out, and, and through her own faith, that Glenn survived, which, good for you, Maggie. Way to not give up on your man. It's gonna be a bloodbath, though. Oh, brutal, brutal bloodbath. Mm -hmm. So, like, like uh, Al here said, they sent the signal balloons up, which, by the way, they being Glenn and Enid, who were tr kind of trying to discover whether or not she was a, she is or isn't a wolf, you know, you know, I think her, her allegiances are rather skewed here, but um, Glenn kind of plays father figure to, to Enid, brings her back, because he feels that's what Maggie wants, you know, Maggie never wanted Enid to, to leave, you know, Alexandria or the group, um, and let's just face it, you know, we have to have somebody for Carl to do the, uh, boomity boomity with when he reaches the age of, I get to do it, um, <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, come on. Out of everybody, you know, pretty much bang during the zombie apocalypse at some point. It's time for Enid and Carl. Come on. Let's just, let's mm. get that done and over with. So, let's also comment, since we're leading up to the whole peak moment. It was not the easiest freaking thing for Glenn to come back after that dipshit. Shoots himself in the head and puts Glenn into a kind of deja vu situation. By the way, I did call that. Mm -hmm. I want you right now on our channel to know I called this. Freaking deja the first episode because Rick gets trapped in the tank. Glenn saves his ass. Mm -hmm. But he is trapped in a very confined space with a walker surrounding him. What the hell happens? Glenn crawls under the dumpster, which by the way, you called on that one. It was a theory. He called that one. I called... The fact that he was going to be surrounded by the walkers in that particular situation. And freaking, uh, he waits it out. And he has that bottle of water, which, good on him. That's, res that's resourceful right there. That's ingenuity. And he waits for the walk. he waits the walkers out. Mm -hmm. And they finally disperse because they're like, okay, this is one target. We're going after many. And they, you know, they make their way 
you know, to Alexandria. And so Glenn uh, gets out from underneath the dumpster and he practically gets beamed in the freaking head by a bottle of water thrown by Enid. It is with her is that the reason she left is because people die according to her and she it's just what happens. She doesn't want to deal with it. Enid should really not what's the word? Not not try to run away. Not leave the group hanging and uh because that's kind of what she did. She kind of left everyone hanging there, and, oh, and no and one dry. knew where the hell she went. High and dry. We uh, go there, Enid. Leave your. Uh, we're just gonna say boyfriend. Just accept it. Leave your boyfriend in the lurch. To by the way, get targeted by Ron, who clearly has it in for poor Carl. So Ron's targeting him with a pistol, no less. That. Another bit of karma I think, and irony. I, I, Rick and yeah. Carl teach him how to shoot. Yeah, I know, right? Because he wanted to learn. Him. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're teaching him. Yeah, they taught him, obviously. But Ugh. see, I think he had this plan from the start. Oh, yes, this is... Yeah. Because I think I think what happened was he saw this um, this whole thing with Enid kind of get... but You know, Carl butted in somehow. And uh, he saw this uh, at, when Car Enid left, um, as Car it was Carl's doing. At this point, we are now to somewhat of a similar situation to deal with a prison. You know, the the prison was absolutely destroyed. The care uh, the core group is split up, but here they're not split up. They're still in Alexandria, but now they have to really make a decision. They they need to. They need to fight their way either out of Alexandria or they just, maybe this, uh, they're here's kind of pre uh, preparing for their last stand. But that's just, yeah, you here, know. Here's my thought. Um, this, is, this is looking to be a bloodbath, this next episode. Very much so. Who will die? Somebody will. Somebody will die. Do you foresee them actually fighting their way at, fighting this out? Or, um, leaving? Ha, you know, Rick now has the ultimate I told you so. Yeah. He was trying to prep these dipshits. You know, and I'm going to say dipshits because, frankly, they just didn't want to listen to him. And you hear, you hear several people in the episode say, I'm sorry, Rick. You are our savior. You were right. We were wrong. We were slow. We didn't... No, 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 no. You chose not to listen to a man who survived quite a few things, including tearing the chunk out of a guy's throat with his own teeth. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, human, you know, chihuahua, or piranha, either or kind of works, because they, they both have little ears. Well, to oh. answer your question, because I, I kind of went off on my, my own little rant there, which, <laughs> by the way, deja freaking Final Fantasy X, I'm just going to say that right there. Mm. Um, I think that it, they're going to be in a a turmoil on it. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be simple because no. of the fact of, you know, how the prison turned out and how it was, you know, something similar to Alexandria. Really similar. Mm -hmm. But one wrong mistake and a psycho called the governor decides that he's going to find and exploit the weaknesses within the armor. Well, the prison was prompted by a psychopath. The thing is, I don't think all of our core group is going to come out of this unscathed. I think there will be a death in the core group, and I think there will be multiple in the Alexandrians. I think their whole army, you know, they're probably going to fight a bit. They are probably going to make the decision to fight, mm -hmm. but they're going to realize that they're outmatched and why they're outmatched. And so there will be casualties on both sides. But like, like we both said before, Abraham's a military man, mm -hmm. so he can use his knowledge, the RPG, possibly open a, a pathway through the, the walker herd just enough to where they can run like hell, even if they have to fight their way, you know, fully out of it, and run, you know, run for the hills. Um, not a cowardly act, but, you know, they're, they're fighting their way out of there, you know, so it's, you know, 
it's a lot easier than just sitting there letting the walkers take them. Yeah. Um, but it, it's not going to be easy. They're probably going to have to try to fend off the walkers up until Abraham and the group get there. So we will, in the interim, uh, waiting for the mid-season uh, premiere mm -hmm. uh, to uh, cover, you know, our ideas and opinions on uh, this new spin-off and see, you know, whether or not it, we believe that it uh, lives up to the hype, but I'm hearing really great things, so it's, I, I think it's possible. Mm -hmm. Quick shout out to Stephen Yun, who did an amazing job as a uh, uh, Glenn coming back for this episode. Mm -hmm. That was that was a great bit of acting, and you know definitely a, uh, an improvement, an uh, evolution from the uh, very beginning of the series. So, kudos on that. Well, that has been our coverage for those last two uh, episodes, season six and seven of yes. The Walking Dead. And stay tuned, guys, for the mid season mid mid season mid season mid season finale episode. Until that time, this is. Uh, E, V, and T, and we will catch you on the flip side.